So what do you do when you try a new yarn on your Addy and it's constantly dropping stitches, skipping stitches, tucking stitches, and giving you all sorts of problems? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use a yarn your Addy doesn't like without dropping, tucking, or skipping stitches. So let's get started. So I have my Addy King here, and what I've got is a flat panel using a yarn my Addy doesn't like. This is one of the squeakier, more plasticky colors of Red Heart Super Saver. Um, some people love this yarn, some people hate it. I'm not a huge fan, but I do use it occasionally. And what I've done here is I've knit a flat panel with this yarn. And as you can see, I have all kinds of tuck stitches, drop stitches, more tuck stitches. This whole edge over here has dropped the edge and then you know, made all these nasty loops and, you know, all this kind of stuff. All of this can happen when you're using a new yarn that you've never tried before and your Addy doesn't like it. And the reason I say that is because I have seen many people say that each Addy is a little bit different. Some machines will take certain yarns and some machines won't. And I'm not saying that isn't true because I've only ever used the machines that I have. So it may very well be that that is true. But I have found that doing one simple thing with your yarn while you're knitting can make a huge difference in the quality of your fabric and nine times out of ten for me trying a new yarn that my Addy doesn't seem to be liking this will fix the problem. So generally when um, when you work with a knitting machine like this I don't remember what it said in the manual for the Addy because I don't know where I put the manual for my Addy. But if I remember correctly, and I have seen other similar knitting machines tell you to do this, they say that you're not supposed to have any tension on the yarn, you're just supposed to pull it out of the skein and kind of leave it in a little puddle next to your Addy and let the Addy feed it by itself. So what you end up with is a flawed fabric like what I've got here. Do you see how that's tucking and skipping as it goes around? And yes, when you when you give the little tug at the edge of your flat panel like you're supposed to do, then that can be helped. But it can also cause lots of flaws in the rest of your fabric. So what I want to show you is how to tension your yarn. And even though the, the uh, manual that comes with the machine does not teach you how to do this, this is not something that's hard to learn how to do, but this is something that you go by feel. And putting a little bit of tension on the yarn is not only going to avoid all of these problems, but it will also produce a more uh, consistent, even fabric because you have control of you know, how fast that fabric is feeding into your machine. So what I like to do is just either put the, the yarn through my fingers like this, or just like this, or what I usually do is I put it in these three fingers, and then I put my hand on the Addy like this, because I don't usually um, attach the legs of my Addy to the edge of a table, because I'm working in the middle of the table, so you can see it on the camera. So I'll usually just hold the yarn like that, and put my fingers on the machine, or sometimes on the little machine, I'll go like that. But what you wanna do is you just want to, as it feeds through your hand, you wanna give it just a little bit of resistance. And you don't wanna give it so much resistance that it ends up um, making the machine hard to turn. If it's harder to turn, then you're putting too much. But you will be able to feel what is too much and what is not enough. So it's still gently, you know, getting a little bit of uh, tension on it as it goes through my hand. And if it makes the machine turn just a tad bit slower, that's okay. But what you don't want is you don't want it where the, the machine has to force the needles up because it's too tight. That is not what you want. You just want to put a little bit of tension on the yarn as it feeds through your hand in the machine. So I'm going to do this for a couple more inches on this panel, and then I'm gonna take it off the machine and show you what that looks like. And I also want to mention that when you are doing this, 
then you can, it's very natural to do this little tug as you go back around because that's not only necessary to make the um, edges of your flat panel neat, but you can also get a better feel. So instead of just, as I come back, just going like this and hanging on to it just for that stitch, then I can control how much tension that stitch gets versus the rest of my knitting. Now you may want to go ahead and pull the yarn out into a little puddle as you go so that it's not, um, if, the, if it's a, a ball or a skein that you're pulling the yarn from the outside, then you may need to pull some out as you go so that you have 100% control over the tension because if it's going around the skein, then you get less tension on it when it's coming over the top than when it has to go underneath the skein to come off the skein. Now, if you're using a center pull skein, then that is um, better. It's not as big of an issue, but either way, it's better to you know have some slack, especially if it's a new ball. Um, even center pull where it's tight in there and you know it has some resistance where it's trying to pull out of the center of the machine. But when it's loose like this, then the yarn can easily feed out of the center of the skein. Then at that point you may not need to pull it out. But on my skein I need to pull out some so that I can control the tension. So if you look right here, you can clearly see the line of where I stopped using no tension and where I started putting a little bit of tension on the yarn. You can see that these stitches are a little bit closer together. Now they also have not been stretched, but it's a much neater fabric even from the back than this up here where I have not tensioned the yarn. So I'm gonna take this off the machine so you can see it. So here is my panel. Down here is the sloppy part with no tension on the yarn. And starting about right here, here's this line where this is my section that I did put tension on the yarn. And as you can see, this part up here is a much neater, um, slightly tighter, more consistent, even knitted fabric than as down here we have some stitches that are extra loose or twisted to one side or pulled to one side. And as you can see down here, when I started with my cast on, this stitch right here didn't even catch the cast on yarn. So I have this weird loop here with another weird loop um, right after it. This edge lost stitches here, caught some more yarn on the extra needles to the side, on the black needles, um, lost or added some more stitches up here again, lost them again, added some more again and lost them and left all these messy nasty loops. This edge is not quite so bad, but it's still a little sloppy compared to what you get when you are putting proper tension on the edge of your flat panel and on the knitting in general. So as you can see here, I've got a tuck stitch, I've got a drop stitch, another drop stitch, another tuck stitch, another tuck stitch, another tuck stitch, here's another tuck stitch, here's another tuck stitch. So you end up with a whole lot of flaws that don't actually need to be there when you don't put tension on the yarn. So the reason why this happens is because when there isn't enough tension on the yarn, then as the yarn is feeding into the hook of the machine and it's just loose and floppy, then sometimes the hook of the needle can split the yarn, it can miss the yarn altogether, or it can catch it down and end up splitting the loop that's down at the bottom of the needle that it's pulling the new yarn through. Or if it's a tuck stitch, then if the um, loop on the needle, that's already on the needle, is too loose, then it can end up catching that back on the way down and taking that down into the machine with it and creating a tuck stitch, which is this right here, where you have an extra strand of yarn over the back because it's condensing two rows of that stitch into one when it shouldn't. So what happens is the hook comes up, grabs the new yarn, 
and then it also grabs the previous stitch that it's supposed to be pulling that new yarn through because it's too loose. And again, when you put tension on your yarn, you definitely don't want to put so much tension that your machine, you know, you have to force it to turn or that it gives you a lot of resistance. A little bit of resistance, just a little bit, is okay. But you don't want to be having to, you know, push harder to turn the machine when you're putting tension on it. So the more you do this, the better you will get a feel for how much tension each yarn will need on the machine, depending on the thickness, depending on, you know, what type of, of yarn it is itself. If it's a smooth yarn, it might need a different amount than a yarn that has a twist to it, where it's like a, a really thick ply of yarn with a, a um, like a thin thread going through it, like a Lion Braid Homespun or like the yarn that I did my mittens with on my mittens video. That one had, you know, two different sized plies of yarn spun together and it was a textured yarn. So textured yarns may give you a little bit more problems, so they might need just a tad bit more tension on the yarn. So it's not enough tension to wear out your machine, it's just enough to make sure that the needles catch the yarn properly without doing all of these nasty little sloppy things to your fabric. So I encourage you to go back and retry those yarns that you've tried on your Addy that didn't work very well. Try them again and see if this little trick can help those yarns to work on your machine. This has worked very well for me and once I realized that this would correct most of the problems that I had with yarns that weren't working very well, the only yarn that I have not been able to get to work on my Addy is like a, a worsted weight cotton, like um, lily sugar and cream or peaches and cream. And that is mainly because the yarn does not have enough give in it to be pulled over all of those, you know, squiggles and, and loops and stuff and tabs on the machine. Um, I don't know if, how many other people have had success with that yarn, but at this point I've used a lot of different yarns on my machine and that's the only one that I haven't actually been able to get to work. So give this a try and you might just find that some of the yarns you thought you couldn't use on your Addy are now usable. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know what yarns you like to use on your Addy in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe, making sure you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching, bye.